You might want to sleep with one eye open tonight. Most people look at urban legends as fiction, scary tales you tell your friends late at night in order to spook them. But what if I told you that some urban legends were more than works of fiction? What if they were based on real life events? Here are 10 creepy urban legends that turned out to be true. Part two. Number one is the real life boogeyman. For decades, kids in Staten Island have feared a boogeyman named Cropsey. The legend was that Cropsey was a madman with a hook for a hand who lived in the woods. He would steal children and drag them to the abandoned Seaview Hospital. But that story became very real in the 1970s and 80s when children in the area started to disappear. Cropsey turned out to be a real life local drifter, Andre Rand. Rand had worked as a janitor at Willowbrook State School, which was an institute for mentally disabled children close to Seaview. In 1972, five-year-old Alicia Peria disappeared, followed by 10-year-old Holly Ann Hughes in 1981. When 11-year-old Tia Heath Jackson went missing, Rand was questioned but was eventually released. But shortly after, he took Hank Gaffario in 1984 and Jennifer Schwager in 1987. Just 35 days after Jennifer went missing, her body was found in the woods near Rand's makeshift campsite. Number two is a murder in the library. There's an urban legend that while looking for books in the library stacks, a university student is murdered in cold blood. But the murderer is so quick and quiet that no one hears it happen and the body isn't discovered for hours. But this was never just a legend. On November 28, 1969, Betsy Ardsma, a 22-year-old graduate student at Penn State University, was at the university's Pate Library working on a research paper. While she was in the stacks, she was attacked and stabbed right in the heart. It wasn't until two unknown men found her that her murder was discovered. Tragically, emergency responders thought that she'd had a seizure and didn't realize that she'd been stabbed because the wound was so small that they didn't notice any blood because she had on a red dress. It wasn't until she was taken to the student health center that they realized what had happened. Most disturbingly is that neither the weapon nor the killer were ever found. Number three is death by wedgie. There's an urban legend that says that if you give someone a bad enough wedgie, it can kill them. And that's exactly what happened in December of 2013 in McLeod, Oklahoma. 34-year-old Brad Davis was drinking with his stepfather, 58-year-old Denver St. Clair. The men got into an argument and things became heated. Brad had a lot of pent up anger from the way that he claims that Denver bullied him growing up. That's when the fight turned physical and Brad's inner 12 year old came out when he gave Denver an atomic wedgie. But rather than just your standard forceful underwear pull from behind, Brad pulled the back of Denver's underwear right over his head. At this point, the elastic band got caught under his chin and choked him to death. What's worse is that Brad did not try to save him and ended up getting charged with first degree manslaughter. As it turns out, not every prank is harmless, especially if there are hard feelings involved. Number four is cooked alive. There's an urban legend that says that a man has to get in an industrial oven that stopped working. Once inside, he fixes it, but the oven turns on, the door jams, and he's cooked alive. And yes, this happened to 54-year-old British factory worker Alan Catterall when he met a similar fate. On December 23rd, 2010, workers at Pirana Moldings, which makes kayaks, found Catterall's body in one of their industrial ovens. He had gone inside the oven, which was about the size of a cargo van, to clean it out after a fault was detected. But Mark Francis, his co-worker and his daughter's fiance, had already found the faulty part. About a half hour after Catterall had got inside, Francis replaced the fixed part and not realizing his soon-to-be father-in-law was still inside, turned the oven back on. The insulated doors shut and locked automatically as the temperature went up to 536 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Alan was cooked alive. Number five is eating a dog. If you're an animal lover, you may want to brace yourself. In this urban legend, a scorned lover tries to reconcile with his ex by making her a nice dinner. But as it turns out, what he was really serving was revenge. That's because the meat that they ate was actually their pet dog that had gone missing. And yes, this really happened. On August 4th, 2014, a woman was attacked by her ex-boyfriend, 34-year-old Ryan Eddie Wattenpog of Pali Cedro after she had broke up with him. She escaped, but when she returned home, her Pomeranian named Bear was missing, but she thought he probably got out in all the chaos. One month later, the troubled couple had briefly patched things up, and he made her a nice dinner. The dinner reportedly went well, and it appeared as if the two had made up. But a few days later, on September 7th, he sent her a text asking how her dog tasted. And what's worse is that he left a bag on her door with bear's paws in it. Number six are spying eyes. In this legend, parents are in the middle of putting their baby to bed when they hear a creepy voice coming from the baby monitor saying, I'm watching you. Unfortunately, this is not just a legend. On July 7th, 2015, a Canadian couple in London, Ontario was putting their child to sleep when their camera baby monitor was remotely activated. It started to play music and a voice told them that they were being watched. The voice would say things like, wake up little boy, daddy's looking for you. They literally had a real life boogeyman on their hands. As it turns out, their wireless router had been hacked and police say that it could have been done from anywhere. This was just one case of the man in the monitor that unbelievably has been occurring more and more often. Remember that next time you connect any home monitoring equipment to your Wi-Fi, anyone could be watching. Number seven is death by hot pepper. There's an urban legend about a chili pepper so hot that it killed the man who dared to eat it. This is definitely not one you want to try at home because this legend isn't just a legend. In fact, it's a cautionary tale. In September of 2008, 33-year-old aspiring chef Andrew Lee from Doncaster, England challenged his girlfriend's brother to a chili eating contest. Lee had made a super spicy sauce from red chilies that his father had grown in his garden. After the brother ate his spoonful, Lee won the challenge by eating an entire plateful. Not long after finishing, he started to feel ill and get itchy, but decided that there wasn't anything to worry about, so he went to bed. But Lee never woke up. It's believed that capsaicin, the active hot chemical in chilies, went right into his bloodstream, causing him to have a terrible allergic reaction and thus a lethal heart attack. Consider Consider this next time you order very hot wings. Number eight is the body in the bed. This urban legend tells the story of a couple who checked into a hotel room that smelled odd, but regretfully they waited until the morning to tell management. Shortly after, it was discovered that there was a body stuffed in their mattress. Unfortunately, this gruesome tale turned out to be very true at the Budget Lodge Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. Sunny Millbrook, a 28-year-old mother of five, had been staying at the motel, but was last seen by hotel staff on January 27, 2010. A missing persons file was opened, but there was no sign of Sunny, who hadn't paid her rent and all her belongings were still in her room. But unfortunately, the room had to be cleared out and was rented at least five times before the staff started to notice a bad smell in mid-March. Police were called and it was found that Sunny had been murdered and her body had been stuffed inside the bed's metal box frame. Enjoy your next night out at a hotel. Number nine is he's inside the house. This legend tells of a girl that is home alone and starts getting creepy and threatening phone calls from a stranger. 
but when she checks the phone, she realizes the calls are coming from inside. This nightmare scenario became very real for a 16-year-old girl from Chester, England in July of 2014. 18-year-old Kyle Ravenscroft had become obsessed with the girl and started stalking her. One night, he began sending her threatening and frightening text messages, including that he was in her yard watching her and that he hoped that she would wake up to find him hanging outside her window. That's when things escalated and he told her that he was inside the house. The victim thought that he was just joking but made the wise choice to sleep in her mom's room that night. In the morning when she went back to her room, she felt like she was being watched. That's when she looked under the bed and found Kyle. And number 10 is the elevator decapitation. This story has it that when rushing to catch an elevator, the doors closed on a victim's head. But the doors wouldn't open and they faced a grisly death when the elevator started moving and they were decapitated. This legend became reality on August 16th, 2003 in Houston, Texas. Dr. Hitoshi Nakaido, a 35-year-old surgical resident, tried to get into the elevator with his colleague, Karen Steinau, as the doors were closing but didn't quite make it. The elevator had been out of service only days before and apparently was placed into service a little too early. Nakaido's shoulders were pinned and despite Steinau's repeated pressing of the emergency stop button, the elevator continued to go up. She tried to pull him back inside the car but with no luck and within seconds, Nakaido was decapitated right in front of her. His body fell down the elevator shaft but his poor colleague was trapped trapped inside the elevator for over an hour with his severed head. Remember that next time you rush to catch an elevator. I really appreciate you guys watching this guys and if you enjoyed it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you have not yet. I'll have a brand new video for you tomorrow at 12 west coast time, 3 eastern standard time so make sure you come by then. Have a great day and sweet dreams.